It's not just the United States that's creating currency like crazy. It's an awful lot of world nations. So what are your thoughts with an inflation outlook? Is that something sustainable or is that just more of a short term phenomenon or doesn't it even exist at all? As you well point out, every country, nearly every country in the world is doing it at an yeah. unprecedented level. In Japan, head of the Bank of Japan says he will print unlimited, that's his word, unlimited, unlimited amounts of money. Everybody is doing it. And historically, that has eventually led to inflation. I mean, I don't know if you go shopping, Keith, or not. Maybe your butler does your shopping, but <laughs> the rest of us know that prices are going up. No matter what it is for education, groceries, restaurants, entertainment, prices are going up again. Now, U.S. government says, don't worry, it's not going to last. If you believe them that things are different this time, that gigantic money printing does not lead to inflation, then you shouldn't listen to me. But I expect more inflation. Now, interestingly, the term quantitative easing is something that was introduced to a lot of people's economic vernacular back about 12 years ago, coming off the global financial crisis. A lot of people predicted that all that currency creation was going to create consumer inflation, but it really didn't. So do you think it'll really be any different this time? And if so, why? Well, it did create some inflation. Governments have a tendency and an incentive to lie about inflation for, right. for obvious reasons. In the U.S., for instance, many expenses are tied to the rate of inflation. So if the government can say inflation is down, they don't have to pay as much. As I say, maybe you don't go shopping or didn't. Anyway, inflation did come back and a lot of it went into financial markets around the world. Bonds are the highest level in, in recorded history. Stocks are booming in the U.S. and most parts of the world. So with the money did go somewhere. Some of it went into price increases. Now more of it's going into price increases. I would suspect we're going to see more inflation, but who knows? That? It, by the way, it doesn't go up every month when you have inflation. It doesn't go up every week, but over period of years, you see price increases, serious price increases. I've heard some people even speculate with hyperinflation. I think that's a bit extreme. Most people's definition of hyperinflation is like with something with what's happened in Venezuela recently, where you can have hundreds of percent inflation per month, not per year, but per month. We haven't had substantial and prolonged deflation since the 1930s after the Great Depression. So a lot of people continue to think just to draw a line, draw the trajectory of where inflation has been and continue to say inflation went out over deflation, but inflation will stay relatively low, relatively muted. What are your thoughts there? I don't see hyperinflation, certainly not in the U.S. or in most countries in the next few weeks, few months, maybe even a few years. But that does not mean that hyperinflation cannot come back. It always has in some countries. And it probably right now, if you go to Zimbabwe or Venezuela, or some places they're having hyperinflation. So it can happen, probably not in the US, probably not in most countries, but don't think it cannot happen. Don't say it's so different this time that we cannot have serious inflation, even if it goes back to what it was in the 70s. That hurts a lot of people. And when you were with us here last time, you predicted that interest rates were going to go higher. But I think you were talking about the long term when you were giving us that outlook. And of course, inflation and interest rates are positively correlated. Is that all congruent with your outlook? Higher interest rates and higher inflation in conjunction with each other? Well, that's usually what happens when you have higher inflation. People demand higher interest rates in order to, to use their money. So it's probably going to happen again. Yes, I would expect that. And you, you are correct in what you said. What I was talking about and what I'm talking about now is, you know, interest rates went down in the U.S. for 40 years. When they turn around, they're going to go up and they're going to go higher for a considerable period of time. Is the Fed really between a rock and a hard place? Is that going to cause a lot of problems in the economy? Because so many people have so much debt that could be unsustainable for everyone from consumers to municipalities to federal governments to pay higher interest rates on their debt. Keith, you are exactly right. But what will happen is the, the Fed, the central bank, will raise interest rates a little bit. They will tell us that it's good. It's a sign of a strong economy and that we should be pleased. But Eventually, the market's going to take over and take control away from the Federal Reserve, and the market will raise interest rates higher and higher because the market's going to say, listen, guys, we know what's going on. We've seen this movie before. We know how it ends. And the market will take interest rates away from the Fed, take control away from the Fed, and that's when the problems get very serious. And that's when we have a recession again. But Keith, I want to remind you, we've had recessions since the beginning of time all over the world, and we will again, even if some politicians say, don't worry, 
never again will we have a recession. They've got Ivy League educations, but don't believe them. <laughs> don't believe them, I assure you, we will have recessions again. And Keith, the next one is going to be the worst in my lifetime. And I say that not as an alarmist, but in 2008, we had a serious problem because of too much debt. Since 2008, Keith, the debt has skyrocketed everywhere. Even China, which had virtually no debt 20 years ago, now has lots of debt and will have bankruptcies. So don't think it's not coming back and don't think it's not going to affect a lot of people. I was listening to you closely, Jim. Maybe I'm taking you too literally. Did you say that the market could be the ones that set the rate in the future rather than the Fed being the one artificially setting these rates? Did I understand you correctly? Tell us about that. The Fed will be a participant. The Fed will be a huge participant and perhaps the most important. But yes, I'm saying to you that central banks do have a lot of power, but at times in history, the market has taken it away. Central banks around the world try to fix uh, currency prices. You know, they say that the pound sterling is worth this, the euro is worth this, the yen is worth this. But it's sometimes the market will say, because central banks, again, try to fix prices. They try to protect their jobs and they try to protect the politician. But there always has come a time when the market says, no, 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 that is not what the euro is worth. The euro is worth this or this or whatever it is. And then they take control away from the central banks. I have learned that if you bet against the central banks, especially when they're absurd, you're probably going to make money. And the same happens with interest rates. Listen, don't think I don't know that central banks are, are gigantically important and powerful, but I also know that the market has more money than the Federal Reserve. Now, this is a paradigm shift for a lot of people, Jim, including me, to think about the fact that the interest rate setting policy could be taken out of the hands or largely out of the hands of the Fed and controlled by the free market. A lot of capitalists will tell you that government intervention in the free market stifles <laughs> capitalism, when you do things like fix wages, you get higher unemployment. Or when you do things like you impose rent control, pretty soon you get dilapidated neighborhoods because, for example, no landlords have any incentive to improve property because they won't get any more rent. Is that similar to the Fed controlling the interest rate rather than the free market controlling what prevailing interest rates should be? Keith, you have learned your lessons well. You have observed and understood and seen what's happening. Yes, that's the way the world has always worked. Maybe now the Federal Reserve has power that even I don't understand and we don't understand. You know, there is a theory around called MMT, more money today. And that means, oh, this will never be a problem again. I hope so. I hope so. But for a few hundred years, a thousand years, we've always had problems periodically. I suspect we will have them again. And MMT may come along and they may print staggering amounts of money. But in the end, that's going to make it worse. That's going to make the value of money go down a lot. That's a good play on words. Of course, MMT is modern monetary theory, and you, you just called it more money today. So why don't I just play devil's advocate? What's wrong with more money today? Why not just pave over the world with money? Won't it solve all of our problems? That's what they say, and it's <laughs> wonderful. People always come up with theories when their things are bad. There was a guy named Marx who came up with a beautiful theory. It sounded wonderful, and a lot of people tried it when things got bad. I mean, nobody wants to be a Marxist anymore because we know it doesn't really work, and people are going to try MMT when things get bad. And it will look okay for a while. Just keep printing and everybody will say, free money. This is wonderful. This is good news. But and maybe it is different this time, Keith. But most things, always, when you have too much of it, the value goes down. And that with money. There's your recipe for inflation. Tell us more about MMT, modern monetary theory. We have not talked about it on this show at all before. What's the premise there? The premise is that you don't really have to worry about balancing the budget by selling bonds or raising taxes. The premise is that if you need more money, that you print money. And as long as you do it without abandon, you know, with some kind of sense of responsibility, everything will be fine. You don't have to raise a lot of debt. You just print what you need. I mean, it's magic. It's magic. It's magic, Keith. Everybody's going to love Everybody that hears it, do, hears it now does love it. Reality will have to set in someday. At least reality always has set in in the past.